of Asifa Sosanet. Today is a December 4, 2012. Uh, it's our great honor to invite Professor Anna Jen to a Asifa interview. And the Professor Anna Jen is one of the most famous uh, pioneers in the field of biomagics. And he has been listed among the, uh, eight, 18 Indian minds who are doing cutting edge work in the field of science and technology. And he is currently a distinguished professor in the Michigan State University. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, uh, recently, research works on biometrics and face recognition and patch recognition are very hot research topics. And uh, compared with research work in 20 or 30 years ago, the research method in biometrics and its application may be quite different. And uh, could you please talk about what are the major differences? of current biometric method and its applications uh, compared with before and uh, what are the most challenges of biometrics research work now? Right. Yeah. So as you know there has been a digital revolution yes. so we have now uh, both variety of sensors to capture face images yes. mobile phones, digital cameras so as a result we now have huge amounts of data yeah. which was not available 20 or 30 years ago. Yeah, uh, in addition, the early work in face recognition started with global features yeah. using what are called principal component analysis. Uh -huh. And for almost 10 years, people simply followed that strategy to design face recognition systems. Yeah. And while they worked on small databases in a very constrained settings, yeah. they did not perform very well on, on sort of more uh, data with more variability mm -hmm. and with large size data sets. So I think that changed the thinking of the researchers and they started looking at some more local features mm -hmm. uh, on the face. So for example, one, one, one example of the local features is uh, the local binary patterns LPP and its yeah. extension MLPP. So I think both the requirements of the system in terms of the performance the variability in the data mm -hmm. and the huge quantities of the data helped us motivate this research. Mm -hmm. Another thing which happened is that the organizations like NIST, the government organizations like NIST, National Institute of Standards and Technology, mm -hmm. started conducting technology evaluations every few years. Mm -hmm. So that means they will provide a common benchmark data and different uh, individuals, research groups or companies will submit their algorithms for evaluation and and that sense of competition also helped uh, in uh, in making progress in face recognition now in addition to face recognition there's also uh, fingerprint is a little bit more mature uh, iris is uh, iris matching is more understood so i think face recognition offers a big challenge to our research community oh, thank you. and the next question is um, some of the basic textbooks in the field of biometrics are written by you and uh, two publications about classroom data have been uh, cited more than 7,000 times in the last 10 years and, uh, and I want to ask uh, how and where are the ideas from and uh, uh, do these ideas come out when you are doing reading papers or working or talking with other people and uh, so I learned some secrets to publish uh -huh. such high quality papers well, you know, that's a, uh, first of all, thank you for your kind words. Um, you know, as a professor, the biggest challenge I have is to identify new problems, which I can give it to my students. And it is generally true that if you make incremental progress in a well-established field, it would not give you as much recognition uh, or citation. If you started working in a new direction and got some small results. So, so I always try to think in terms of finding a new area which other researchers or my colleagues have not yet investigated. And just to give you an example for face recognition, uh, given the maturity of frontal face to frontal face matching, you know, yes, we can still make some progress, but the progress will be relatively small because field has matured in that in that problem. But you can get a lot more attention of your work uh, by looking at 
some difficult scenarios which have not yet been investigated. So face recognition under occluded conditions or some of the work which we are doing, we are been matching a face sketch to a photo rather than photo to a photo but sketch to a photo or taking infrared image of the face and then matching it to the visible band image. So, so my challenge always is to identify a good problem which I can assign my student and postdoc so they get the recognition. I mean, I always believe that if my students do good work, then I become more famous because of their work and it also helps them get a, get a good job. Yes. So by reading a lot of papers, by talking to people, uh, going to the conferences, listening to talks, reading journal articles, you get some sense of uh, what has been done and what are still some open area or holes which you can and the third question is and the, uh, did you imagine that when you are students you are so successful in your research field and uh, so could you please give some suggestion to the young scientist who have a dream to be an expert in their research field I just got lucky I think I mean I never thought I, I never even thought that I would be a professor after I finished my PhD yeah. uh, getting an assistant professor job was the only job I got um, because uh, in 1972, almost 40 years ago when I was looking for a job, the, there was a recession in the economy and there were not many jobs in the company. Um, you know, in, in 1970s, you know, people preferred to have a job in a research lab like Bell Labs or IBM uh, research labs and academic jobs were not so, uh, were not the first priority. But I got the academic job and I said, I'll make the best out of it. You, you cannot worry about what job you get. You take what you get and you make the best out of it. And, and so, you know, I, I worked hard to identify research problems, persisted in it. And I was fortunate that I have some good collaborators, good students who did some good, good work. And so I take the credit for <laughs> the work which they did. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, could you please give some suggestion to the PhD students uh, who on um, how to select their careers in academic or the industry? Right. Yeah, and what is the life like in the academic? Right. I think these days, I think most PhD students, if they have an opportunity, would like to consider an academic career. So there are certain advantages of the being in academia. One of the biggest advantages is you have some flexibility in the choice of the problem. Also in industrial labs, uh, you're not as free to pursue uh, research on any topic. Somehow it has to be mission oriented because after all a company is in the business of making money and the economy is tight, more competition. So I think the researchers in industry are expected to follow a more rigid agenda. Whereas in the, in the academic environment you have a little bit more flexibility, you have an opportunity to work with students, other colleagues. Not only that, you also have flexibility in terms of your personal life. You don't have to show up at 8 in the morning and then leave at 6 or 7. You can rearrange your personal schedule. So I think another advantage is that the salary differential between academia and industry is not as much. You know, the starting salary is comparable between academia and industry. 20 or 30 years ago, industry used to pay more higher salary. So, so given the flexibility of personal lifestyle, the choice of the research problems, opportunity to work with the students, travel, you know, I mean, I think as a, as a, even as a PhD student, I think you travel more yes. than some of the industry yeah. uh, researchers. So I think those are the advantages of being in academia. But having said that, academic life is also challenging and difficult. Yes. And why is it difficult? Because you have to juggle many things. As a professor, you have to do the teaching, yeah. you have to publish, yes. you have to supervise students, uh, you have to be a good citizen in the department. Uh, published papers yes. and so you have to manage many things and you cannot ignore anything so if you ignore your classroom I think you will get penalized 
If you don't get any research grant, you may publish a lot, but if you don't get any research grant, that's also bad. Yeah. So you have to make sure that you are good in multiple categories. Whereas in industrial environment, the demands are, are, are not as widespread. You know, you have to do work, but you can do in some relatively narrow domain. Yes. So there are both advantages and disadvantages of uh, industry versus academia. Yeah. And the, the last question that I want to ask you is about uh, where, where do you see this um, biometrics program in the future? And uh, could you please talk about the changes of the computer vision, face recognition, and biometrics in the next 10 years? Right. So I think the biometrics is here to stay. I think people have realized that the, the traditional method of recognizing an individual or authenticating an individual based on ID cards, passports, or passwords, or PIN is not adequate. Mm -hmm. And we need a stronger method for authentication. Mm -hmm. And the stronger method of authentication is based on the body characteristics, which could be iris, or face, or fingerprint, or voice. And so there are large scale systems which are being deployed worldwide. Um, we already have systems uh, at the country level for law enforcement and forensics, but now for civil registration, as I mentioned about the India UID program, that's opening up new challenges. Other countries are also following that. Now then comes into the consumer devices. Uh, it could be the, the mobile phones as an example. Why can't we authenticate the user of the mobile phone based on his voice, his face, and yes, other, yes. other modalities? Surveillance cameras, that offers the, one of the most challenging opportunities for unconstrained face recognition. I think that's one of the biggest uh, uh, open problems uh, to be useful for students and other researchers. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Master.